Hi there. So we've asked Jamie Carragher to select his best team combined with Arsenal and Manchester United from the Premier League era. It's a, it's a tough challenge, this one, on, on paper, Jamie, I think. So we'll start with the goalkeeper. Mm -hmm. Tough choices. Who have you gone for? Well, it was always going to be a toss-up between, I think, David Seaman and Peter Schmeichel. But I think for me, Schmeichel, the greatest goalkeeper in Premier League history, certainly. So it has to be him in goal. Well, I, I, before you carry on, I mean, it's a fairly obvious choice, isn't it, a right-back? You think? Well, I mean, your co-worker, your, your friend, someone that you admire <laughs> and respect. Who, who friend? Fled. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> yeah. So Gary never looked right-back then? No. Oh, OK. No. Who have you gone with? Well, I, I looked at it and I thought, who are the two best full-backs, really, in, you know, left-back, right-back? And Dennis Irwin is right-footed. Even though he played left back, I could not leave Dennis Irwin out and I couldn't leave Ashley Cole out. So I decided to put them both in. Dennis Irwin scored goals, took free kicks, took penalties. So he's at right back, so Ashley Cole left, left back. back at right back. No, he's right footed. <laughs> and Ashley Cole, fair enough. Um, and your centre halves, well, two very good ones, one from each. Yes. I went, for, I went for a contrast, really. I thought it was either sort of Tony Adams or Vidic. I didn't want to play the two of them together, if you like, so just one of those, so I thought Adams had the edge. And then a different type of centre-back alongside him, so... I don't think Arsenal really had a real Ferdinand type defender in, in those great sides. Sol Campbell, Martin Keown, probably more aggressive, my type of uh, defenders, really. So I've, I've gone for real to have that nice balance with Tony Adams. They've had, uh, in their times, two fantastic midfields, so this must have been tricky sorting this out. This was the tough one. I think, but I mean, I think the wide positions weren't as difficult as the central positions. I think in Ronaldo, that was a shoe in. You know, David Beckham was fantastic uh, for Manchester United, but Ronaldo has to go in. Giggs, a little bit more tricky because I thought of Perez, you know, when he was part of that side with Henri and, and Ashley Cole down that left side it was amazing. But central midfield was the, the big problem, really. And I've just gone for the two players, obviously, who I, th I thought were the two best, but you think of the players who missed out, you think of primarily of Paul Scholes and probably Emmanuel Petit. You don't forget, it was World Cup winner as well when he was in his time at Arsenal. But the two main men for me in midfield of, in, in the Premier League era, I think of those battles, was Roy Keane and Patrick Vieira. But it was great watching them on, on opposite sides. Do you think they could have actually played together? Well, it would have been interesting that because I think that almost happened in the early 2000s. There was a talk of Vieira going to Manchester United. It would have been amazing, really, to see see that, really. And he would have been the real boss in the midfield because that, that's what they were. They were the leaders of both teams. And I think it's difficult at times to have those two leaders right in the centre of the park. So it would be been interesting how that combination would have, would have worked. But two great battles and two great icons of the Premier League. All right, two forwards then. I'm assuming one of those is Wayne Rooney, who we know well, has been on the show <laughs> with us. No, couldn't get you in, Was <laughs> Couldn't get you in. No. Uh, the, I'm saying the midfield, the centre midfield, the difficult one. That was the difficult one. I mean, Henri was always going in. For me, the best player in, in Premier League history. So he was always going to go in. But you think of the, the strikers... They've had, you think, a Cantona sort of taking Manchester United a different level, really. York and Cole, Sheringham there, who got player of the year one year in that position. Van Nistelrooy, you say Wayne Rooney, but I just couldn't leave Dennis Bergkamp out. It just... Do you remember Ashley Cole did? Yeah, what? Yeah, he, he put, <laughs> did he put Drogba in or something? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. But no, I had to put Bergkamp, I think that combination. And I think, to be honest, he was the player who, we think of Cantona taking Man United you know, that Ferguson team, the next step of winning titles. But he did that for Arsenal. It was actually, I think it was Bruce Rioch, I think, who signed him, I think. But it, in 98, that double, I think he was the, he got PFA Player of the Year, Footballer of the Year. So he sort of took Arsenal to that next level, really. And then you think of even the team in, in 2002. Uh, fantastic team. He was still playing then. And I think uh, he probably just edges it for me, really. And maybe not just for what he did at Arsenal. I think what he actually did on... That goal he scored in you know, the World Cup, what has he done for Holland? He probably done more for his national team than some of the other the players I'm, I'm talking about at Manchester United. He was, he was probably more world-renowned, I'd say, Dennis Bergkamp around the world than some of the United strikers, and I just went for him. And for, uh, as, as far as Thierry goes, was that a little bit of your, your own personal experience? Was he one of your hardest foes, would you say? Yes, definitely the toughest opponent, Thierry Henry. I think the Arsenal team from... 2002 to 2004 was the best team I ever played against, and that's including 
Champions League and European teams we come up against, that was the toughest team. And uh, yet, without a doubt, I, I think he was the he was the best player in the world. Then I think I think it was him or maybe Ronaldinho at that time was it? But he was he was by and far I think uh, far and wide the, the best player in the Premier League, and that's why he's he was. He was Automatic shooting. We just got a clip that we can show you actually. When you... <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't. We don't. <laughs> who's, your, who's your manager? Is it Benger or Ferguson? Oh, Ferguson. Uh, great respect for both managers. Obviously, only obviously never worked with any of them. You're watching from afar. I mean, what Wenger did when he came in, and, and basically, we thought we were the team to go and challenge, you know, Manchester United. And Wenger comes in, and all of a sudden, it's Arsenal winning leagues. And the brilliant thing about Arsene Wenger. I always admire was he didn't have the, the finances that Manchester United had and he still sort of beat them and competed with them but sometimes when you see a team compete with someone who's got more money they'll do it a different way a little bit like probably what we did at Liverpool under Julian and Benitez in that you had to beat solid clean sheets workmen like they actually played as good a football if not better at times really with, with less resource and that's always the hardest thing so that was that was a special achievement I think from Wenger but I mean what, what Alex Ferguson's done the Premier League, you've got to go for him. Let's have a final look at the, um, the team then. Uh, I think we've counted six for, uh, six for United and five for Arsenal with um, Sir Alex as the manager. And I, I suppose most um, notably as well for me, looking at this with the, with the game ahead, is, is the most recent of these players. You have to go quite a long way back, don't you, for um, Ashley Cole, the most recent to retire. Mm. Um, long way to continue. <laughs> <laughs> That's something to get you talking this afternoon then, yeah. your favourite Arsenal-Manchester United combined teams. Thanks, Jamie.